What do you say? Let's finish up section two today. Hey everyone, I hope you had a wonderful Easter and did something wonderful together. Today we are going to finish up section two. So real quick, let's look at what we have. We have all of section one complete. I'm loving seeing all your pictures on Facebook. You guys are doing so great at sharing your progress. And then we have um, these two blocks from section two. So the pin cushion block and the flying geese block. One thing I wanna note is since we haven't sewn them together yet, I'm waiting for the filler blocks, um, make sure to keep some tape on that thread so that when you do sew them together, you don't sew that extra, that embroidery floss into your seam. All right, so these are looking great. You guys did such a great job. So today, I think it's gonna be pretty easy. We actually just have the filler blocks since we're just jamming along. So the filler blocks for section two is on page 30. And let's go ahead and talk about what we need for this. So if you will recall, there is a batting guide. I did a prep video before we started this project and went over some tips and tricks about batting. And I gave you a guide on what I recommend for cutting. So on the filler blocks, like I've mentioned in that prep video and in our section one fillers, I recommend cutting the fabric and the um, the batting, sorry, a half inch larger. So in the guide, you'll see that it says um, the exact size for each of the fabrics. And my recommendation is a half inch larger always. And the whole reason for that is so that when you um, do that tack down, it will actually tack down your fabric. That's it. That's really the only benefit. Um, otherwise, you may need to use tape and it can pull up the sides a little bit, like leave little stringies type of thing if you um, end up putting tape on it. Um, and you have to just watch to make sure that it stays where it is. Whereas if you are, are able to utilize that tack down line, it just makes things a lot easier. So that's my recommendation, a half inch larger than what it says in the book. All right, so let's go ahead and go over each of the uh, filler two blocks. There's quite a few of them, but I already looked at it and I think we can fit them all in one hooping depending on your hooping size. And again, you can do them individually. You can do some in one hooping and some in another hooping, whatever works for you. Um, so I had messages yesterday saying that um, the, this person doesn't have in brilliance and they can't... Um, add this in and blah, blah, blah. Just know that you would, even though I'm showing you on a tutorial how to do it a little bit quicker and faster um, and simpler and, and save on stabilizer and all of that, it's optional. You absolutely can do that. Most of these things you can do on your embroidery machine. And I pointed that out um, in the messages yesterday. Um, but you could easily utilize your embroidery machine to open up the quilting design and then bring in the embroidery design on top of that. You can do that on your embroidery machine. You can use Embrilliance Essentials like I do, or you can use your existing software. I don't have all the specifics of every type of software, but most of these techniques you should be able to transfer over and go like, oh, well, mine does it this way and, and figure out what will work for you. So, um, section two fillers, there's a lot of them and I'm going to do them all in one hooping. But again, totally optional. You can do it on your embroidery machine, moving them around on your embroidery machine. You can use other software, whatever works for you. All right, so let's go over what we need. So that, like I said, there are quite a few of them and I've already got mine in order. So I'm just going to go through them one by one. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh, I love that. So love that. Um, and I want to hear what you did yesterday. I'll talk more about that in a bit, but I'm excited to hear how your weekend was. All right, so the first one is this gray, I'm calling them Starburst. I don't know what the actual name is of any of the fabrics, but I call this Starburst. So it's gray fabric with white Starburst on it. I don't know what it is. Could be like snowflakes or something. I don't know, I'm calling them Starburst. All right, so anyway, so this one, uh, we are going to start with this. Let's see, oh, we're on section two. I was looking at section one for a second going, that doesn't fit. <laughs> so um, it is, we're gonna use a one by six 
quilting design so that means in the book it probably has you cutting at one and a half by six and a half so i cut mine to two by seven two by seven for your um, filler block all of these long ones will be two by seven but again, if you did what it says in the book, which I'm assuming was one and a half by six and a half, that will work. Don't worry. Um, so same thing for your batting. I'm going to go through each one together. So since they're the same, you can see two by six for your fabric and two by six for your batting. And I did back my filler blocks with fusible stabilizer. I recommend it. So we are quilting these. Um, and my concern is that, especially if you're doing the one and a half by six and a half, it, the stitching, like I've mentioned on lots of videos, the stitching could pull it in a little bit and then it will make your block a little bit smaller and then everything may not fit together the way that it's supposed to. So if you're doing two by six, then it's going to do that tack down line and we will cut on that tack down line. So we're not gonna have to measure, we're not gonna have to do anything. You should measure, especially if you did not stabilize. But if you stabilized, it's not gonna shrink down. So um, you, you will be able to cut right on that tack down line and everything will be fine. So let's keep going. So the gray one with the starburst, two by, where were, two by seven. I hope I said that, two by seven. Um, and if you are using the guide, then one and a half by six and a half will work. So for this one, all of these actually, for all of these um, longer ones, the quilting is called Pins Quilting. And it's in, I saw it um, today, it's in the quilting bundle for Oh So Delightful and it's at the very bottom and it's just a, um, a pins design, it's pins quilting and it was pretty cute. So I was actually thinking a variegated thread might be fun on the ones that you can see like this light gray, that would be kind of fun I think. Um, but anyway, so two by seven for your fabric and your batting um, or like the book says either way so that's number one for us it's actually number nine in our book because our first um section had the first eight filler blocks so we had eight filler blocks on this one so we're actually starting on number nine all right so i'm just going to use those numbers so we don't get too confused all right so number 10 is this green starburst the same one but in a um, olive green color and again same thing two by seven for your fabric and your batting there's my batting it's not already attached i'm just showing you that they they are the same size two by seven for this or again one and a half by six and a half whatever works and we're going to use the quilting design pins quilting in a one by six pins quilting in a one by six it's nice that they gave us a one inch design because one inch designs are hard to find i will warn you so if you didn't buy the bundle you can look through other things there are some that are one inches they're just hard to find so this pins one by six will fit perfectly all right and then the next one is this red dots red line dots this is a directional fabric so hopefully you cut it the way recommended in the prep video um, so this one is also two by seven for your fabric and your batting i did stabilize it as i mentioned um, and we're going to use that pins quilting all right so the red with white straight lines on it dot dotted lines i should say dotted lines all right, and then I'm doing these in order, but when I get to the Embrilliance Essentials part, I'm going to move them around so that it will fit well. So the next one, this is number 11. No, sorry, this is number 12, my mistake. So number 12 is this um, white floral. All right, and we're gonna start with this at three by three, both your fabric and your batting at three by three. It's not already attached. I'm going to do that as part of our quilting design. Um, so three by three, that, that was a question also. I had, I had a lot of messages yesterday and somebody was asking about the quilting on the flying geese and we already did that tutorial, so don't want to confuse you or anything, but the quilting is always part of the quilting design and the embroidery design. The flying geese is the embroidery design. So that's why we add them both in and on that flying geese, we had to move the quilting. So it was a little bit confusing, but that tutorial went step by step. So if you haven't started on that one, just follow the tutorial step by step and you'll do great. All right. So anyway, this is just for the quilting. There's no embroidery on these filler blocks. 
just the quilting and it'll be fun to see the quilting stand out because it's such cute designs so the quilting will stand out on the ones that are the lighter colors like that gray i'm looking forward to seeing the pins on that so anyway back to this one um this one my recommendation is three by three so that means that the book is probably and I have a call. All right, sorry about that. So my um, phone stops recording if I get a call, even though I would rather keep going and ignore the call. So we were on this one. So this was three by three. This was number uh, 12. And like I said, I recommend three by three, but in the book it says two and a half by two and a half, and that will work fine. Um, I do recommend stabilizing it. So this one, we're gonna do geometric seven for our quilting design. Geometric seven in a two by two quilting design okay and then we have the red um, with the dotted lines again and this one again three by three is my recommendation and same with your batting three by three and we're gonna do zigzag two in a two by two quilting design for this one this is number 13 all right 13 lucky 13 in a two by two horizontal, I should say, zigzag two in a horizontal design. All right, uh, for the quilting. And my recommendation is three by three on your fabric and your batting and stabilize if you can. All right, and then that pretty, pretty, pretty one. I love this one, isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh, I love that. I should buy like a whole bunch of this fabric because it's just so pretty. All right, so this one is uh, number 14. And this one, um, my recommendation is five by five. I cut my fabric to five by five and also my batting to five by five, um, and I stabilized it. This one is gonna be hearts five in a four by four. Kind of a bummer, because we're not gonna see that. Um, I'll probably even do a thread color that won't stand out just because I love the fabric. I think I'd rather have the fabric stand out on this one. So this is hearts five and we're going to use a four by four quilting design for this one. This is number 14. All right. And then the rest are all that thin one. Let's see if I can pick it up. All right. And then it is a teal, a dark teal with the navy um, flowers on it. And this one is number 15. And like I said from before, two by seven is my recommendation on your fabric and your batting. Um, stabilize it if you can. And we're going to use that pins quilting in a one by six quilting design. One by six pins quilting design. All right. This is number 15. And then for number 16, we have this mint with the arrows. And this again is a um, directional fabric. So um, hopefully you've cut it in the way that um, was in the prep video. Hopefully I did too. I don't remember now off the top of my head, but anyway, two by seven is my recommendation. So in the book, it probably says one and a half by six and a half, and that will work fine. Um, but my recommendation is two by seven, just to get that tack down line. It makes it easier in my opinion. So we're going to use pins quilting in a one by six for this one. So two by seven on your fabric and your batting and quilting design pins quilting in one by six. And last one, this is gray. It looks a little tan it is gray um so gray with the dotted lines on it another directional fabric and this one pins quilting again in a one by six quilting design i recommend the fabric and the batting cut to two by seven and so all of these um we have a lot of the same quilting designs, but a lot of them we will use different thread colors and that's your choice. You can absolutely, you could merge them all together and use a gray or a white or something simple if you wanted to just not have to stop the machine. I'm going to probably do all of them separate um, just so that I can decide what color I want to use or I might decide as I'm working on in Brilliance Essentials but anyway either way it will work um, but we are going to do some color sorting and some joining and some moving around and, and see what we can fit in one hoop like I said I already tested it and so I do know that it can be done in one hoop depending on your hoop size and I only have my smaller machine, my other one's in the shop, so it still can be done. So anyway, um, uh, let's go ahead and go to the computer so that I can show you in Umbrellians Essentials what needs to be done to join them together. 
Hey everyone, so I am going to show you in Brilliance Essentials how to join the filler blocks for section two together. You have to promise not to look at my room though. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's such a mess. Um, so this past weekend I made my little um, Swaddle Sweeties dolls. I only made two so far. Um, I have two more to make, but oh my goodness, I have stuff literally everywhere. Like there isn't even an inch of space on my desk right now. So I need to clean that up. So just excuse all of this. <laughs> but let's talk about um, our filler blocks for section two. So I'm going to open up in Brilliance Essentials. And it's opening up to my six by 10 hoop. So I am going to go up here to, you can see that down here. And that's why I was circling this um, hoop six by 10. So I'm going to go up to this preferences folder and I am going to choose my nine by 14 hoop and say, okay, if you have a 10 by 16 hoop or um, larger, if there is larger, uh, you could use that. Um, the 9x14 will work though. I already tested it. I don't have my um, bigger machine right now. It's at a spa day getting repaired. So I'm using my 9x14. If you have smaller hoops, you can just do um, uh, some in one hooping, some in another. It doesn't matter at all. All right, so I am going to go to actually, so you can see that it's um, showing me part of my hoop, but not all. So I'm going to go to this compass button and say H, and it will make it so that I can see my whole hoop. Um, or you can use your mouse button. See, mouse will scroll in and out as well. Either way. All right, so we're on my 9 by 14 hoop. I'm going to go to merge stitch file right here. And it's in my Swaddle Sweeties because that's what I worked on last. So I'm going to close that. I'm in my desktop. It's just asking where you have the files that you want to work on. Mine's on Oh So Delightful. And then there is my quilting bundle. And let's see here. So we're going to start with um, that pins quilting. And like I mentioned, it's this last folder. So all the way down at the bottom, pins quilting. So I'm going to open that plus sign and then embroidery files and Pez. So you can see it didn't have block by block and clear blue tiles. That means that it is a um, clear blue tiles design. It does not go into the seams. I hope that doesn't confuse you too much. There's only one. That's really funny. I just assumed there would be other sizes. There's just one and it's that one by six that we need. So go ahead and double click on that. Um, I am going to click on it so that it's selected and I'm going to rotate it using this rotate button up here. See this little blue? It doesn't matter if you do left or right. And then like we talked about in a recent tutorial, if you try to move it with your key button, see it's just up here scrolling through. It's not actually doing the design. So I'm going to go ahead and click outside anywhere in the workspace and then click on the design again, and then it will allow me to move it up. And you can do this with your mouse or your um, the arrow keys on your keyboard, either way. I'm also going to move it over to the left, because if I recall, I tried putting something to the side. So just make sure that you can see those black squares. If it's over that, then that means that you're over the hoop and that won't be a good thing. So while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and change all of these colors. Um, since we're going to copy and paste this a bunch of times. So I'm clicking on the first one, 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 click on the color, and I'm going to change it to the first color that comes up, which for me, since I've got Filtech Glidus, my preferred thread color, it comes up as dark aqua. So I'm going to say dark aqua and say, okay. And then one, two, click on the color. And the first color that comes up for me is blaze, say, okay. And it doesn't matter what color you, you use. Um, I'm just using what comes up first for me. It's just quick and easy. All right, so now I'm on one three, and then I'm gonna click on the color, and we already used dark aqua, so I'm gonna use the second color down, which is marine. And then one four, click on one four, and click on the color. We already used blaze, so I'm gonna use the second color down, which is oriel. Now on this turquoise, I am going to I'm going to go ahead and let's see, I'm just going to change it. So it's funny, you, we could, you could like choose a gray so that um, every time you use one of the gray fabrics, because there are a few gray fabrics in here, you could join those. Um, but 
I am thinking I want to do something pretty. This is the one we're working on right now. So this is the um, that starburst gray one, and I am I'm pretty sure I won't use a gray gray thread on this. I think I'd like to use something that will stand out, maybe even a variegated thread. So I'm gonna just change them all, and then I can decide the thread colors when I get there. Ouch! All right, click on the color. The first color that comes up for me is sprout. All right, so those are all done. That's perfect. We've got all five of those um, in a way that we can join or not join what we want to happen. So that's the first one, that's number nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click in the workspace just to make sure I've got all five. You wanna make sure if I click on it, you can see I've got all five selected. If I hadn't clicked outside on the workplace, it was workspace, it was just on number five and that's all you would copy and paste if you were only, if you only had one five selected. So make sure you've got all five parts of the quilting design and then say control C to copy and then control V like victory to paste it. All right, and it goes right on top of it so you can't see it, but you can see in here that we've got one design and now we have two designs. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the arrow keys on my button on my keyboard to move this down. And we don't need much room. You do need a little bit because of that half inch um, extra fabric. If you did not cut your fabrics larger, then it will fit right within this and you won't be able to util utilize that tack down line. But we don't need much room. So I'm just gonna have it down a little bit. That will work fine. All right, so that is the second one. I'm gonna go ahead while I think about it, I'm gonna click on two five. Notice I clicked outside so that they weren't all selected. I'm gonna click on two five and while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna go ahead and change that thread color. I'm gonna just have them all stop, I think. I'm not absolutely sure about that because I, I, I think it's easier just so that when you get there, you can change your mind and decide what thread color that you want. So anyway, I'm on 2.5. I'm going to click on the color. We already used Sprout, so I'm going to go down to the next one, which is Sea Green. All right. Now, see, I'm only on 2.5. So if I did a, well, actually, let's do a Control V like Victory, because we should have that other one still pasted. Oh, no, we can't. It didn't work, right? No. Nope. We've only got the two designs. So that's funny. If you start working on something else, it doesn't remember that you had it paste. Or maybe that's because it was selected. Let's try again. Control V. It did. All right. So that's because I was uh, on a, if you have something selected, you can't do a paste. So I just clicked outside in the workplace, in the workspace, and then did a Control V like victory to paste. And then it did do from before. So that's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my arrow keys again and move this one down. Now we're on number three of our um, filler blocks. And it's funny, my watch is telling me to get up and be active. Um, and yet we just did a three mile walk. <laughs> Give me a break, we're working now. All right, so we are on number three. So again, I want to change. Notice I clicked outside of the area to be able to click on number five because I just want to change that number five, three, five, to be able to change the quilting color. So I'm going to go down to the third one and I'm going to choose mint. All right, and then click outside anywhere in the workspace and hit control V again because we actually need six of these. So I'm just gonna do them together. So you could do them um, in order by the book where there's some two by twos and a four by four and these one by sixes. Um, but I'm just gonna do the one by sixes all together. I think that will make it easier. So I've got the same parts here and I want to change this four five clicked outside of the box somewhere to deselect all the others and I just want four five selected. And I'm gonna come down to number four. One, two, three, four, Magic Mint. Because we used mint as the last one. You can count them, because we're on number four, or you can just look up here at three, five, at what we used last, and use the one after that. So for me, it's Magic Mint. All right, so that is done. And like I said, we need six of these. So I'm just gonna keep on going. So click somewhere else so that nothing is selected, and then hit Control V for victory to be able to um, have a fifth one. And I'm just gonna bring that down also. 
All right, and then again, I have all five selected on number five, but I only want this fifth one. So I'm gonna click outside of the box somewhere, click on five, five, and I'm gonna to go to the color and I'm gonna count down one, two, three, four, five. For me, that's cloud and say, okay. All right, click outside anywhere to have nothing selected and say control V for victory to get one more. And now this one, I am going to rotate it doesn't matter which way and then I'm going to move it I'm going to click on it and drag it over to the corner here all right so that has three five six so now we have six of these since we're on number six we want to make sure to remember to change that quilting so I'm going to go to six five click on the color and one two three four five six I'm on azure we used cloud last and say okay all right, so those are done. Those are the first six. Now we need um, a couple of two by twos and a four by four. I think I'm gonna do the four by four first. Yeah, just to have some room, I think. I'm gonna go to merge stitch file and the four by four is the hearts five. So I'm gonna go up here and close that pins quilting. We're done with that. And we're going to go to hearts five. Oh, right there, I've already clicked on it. Okay, and then embroidery files, block by block is the technique we are using, and Pez uh, is what I use for my machine. And we're looking for a four by four on this one. So there it is, we've used this before. Look at this two by eight, isn't that so pretty? And look at the four by 12. I, I have to think of other projects to utilize all of these quilting sizes, because look at how pretty that is, I love that. All right, so we're looking for four by four, double click on that, it will go to the center and I'm just gonna click on it and drag it down here to this left corner. Maybe down just a tiny bit more. And over just a tiny bit more. No, nope, maybe that's too much. Okay, um, now same thing. I want those same as the one through fours of before, um, but I want the fifth one to be a different color just because I think that will make it the easiest. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on seven one. We're on number seven now. Click on the color and I want the same colors I used before, which if you don't recall, you can always see them right up here. But dark aqua was the color I used. And then for seven two, <clears throat> click on the color and I used blaze. And then seven three, click on the color and I used marine. And seven four, click on the color and we, I used oriole. All right, and then seven five. So I'm gonna click on this one. I'm gonna click on the color and I'm gonna count down seven now. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. So now I'm on light turquoise and say, okay. All right, and again, it doesn't matter what color you use. I'm just doing that to be able to um, have them be different. And you don't have to do that. It's up to you. I want them, I want that stop. The machine will stop and say, hey, do you wanna change your thread color? so that um, that creates a stop when you have a different color. All right, so now we're going to go to merge stitch file and I'm gonna close up this hearts five right there. And now we're gonna bring in a couple of two by twos. So on the two by two, um, they're different, unfortunately, it would have been easier, but um, there's other ways to do it, but that will just complicate it. I'm going to bring in geometric seven and keep it simple in a two by two, so block by block, Pez, and a two by two geometric seven right there. And I'm going to bring it over to the side here. And again, same thing, we're gonna just change these colors real quick. It would be easy to do a copy and paste, but um, they're different and there is a way, but we'll just keep it simple. All right, so I'm on eight one. Click on the color and we know we want dark aqua. Eight two, click on the color and we want blaze. Eight three, click on the color and we want marine. Eight four, click on the color and we want oriole. And then now on our quilting design, click on the color and we want the eighth one down. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm clicking on that just so it brings it down so I can see further. And then baby blue, yep, baby blue is after light turquoise. So I'm using baby blue, say okay. 
and that one is all done. So I'm going to go to Merge Stitch File and bring in the last one. And the last one is another 2x2, two two, and this one is a zigzag 2. So I'm going to close up Geometric 7 and go to Zigzag 2, Embroidery Files, Pez, and this one goes into the seams. So this one we want to make sure to choose a horizontal. So it's 2x2 two two horizontal. That's vertical, there's horizontal. So, oh, that's two by four, sorry. Two by two, zigzag two, horizontal, right there. All right, and I'm gonna just drag it down here to this corner, maybe a little too low, right there. All right, and then real quick, we're gonna run through those colors. So click outside of the box so that all five are not selected. Click on nine one and click on the color dark aqua. 9-2, click on the color, blaze, 9-3, click on the color, and we already used dark aqua, so we're going to use marine, and 9-4, click on the color, and we want the second color down, which is oriole, and then for the uh, quilting design, I'm going to click on the color, and uh, we want 9 down, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine so dark aqua is the one I'm using and you could just scroll through and pick a color but it just makes it easier to remember what you've already used if you use the number system but again totally optional whatever works for you all right so those are done we got all of these how many are there one two three four five six seven eight nine filler blocks in one hooping that's pretty impressive um, I'm going to move this one up. Remember, if you're going to move anything, you have to do it before you um, do your color sort. Once it's a color sort, once you've color sorted, everything's joined together and you can't move anything. That's why you want to make sure to check that you're not over the hoop lines, um, that everything is how you want it. So you can see this will be a little bit tight right here, but I have a little bit of room here. So it we just have to watch it a little bit. It's not going to be a big deal. All right, so these are done. So you could go through, you could absolutely decide right now, oh, I'm going to use a pink on this. I'm going to use a green on this. You could choose your colors right now and then color sort even further down where there's less stops, but I'm not going to bother. So one thing you do want to do is you want to put these in the order that you have them on your screen so that um, when it stitches everything, because if you were to leave it how we went over them as far as the actual numbers, when it gets to that one, you're going to be like, why am I putting a four by four on this one by six? So you want to have these in order. So real quick, it would be the first three that are, it was three, right? Yep. The gray one, the green one, and the red dotted one. Those are the first three in that upper left hand corner and then we would continue with them instead of jumping to the two by twos we would continue with these because of the order that's the order that we put them in so it would be the dark blue or teal it's a dark teal the mint arrows and then the gray lines and then i think we did the four by four next so this one and then we did the two by two so this one would be the geometric and this one would be the zigzags. All right, so that's the order to have them in so that when you're when you start your process, you can just put all of your fabrics down in that order. However, you did them in your um, hoop. So again, if you're using a different size hoop or you arranged yours differently, just take a quick look and put your fabrics in that order. It'll make things a little bit easier. All right. So, yep, it was geometric seven and then zigzag two, just confirming that. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and do a color sort now. We currently have 45 color steps. That would take us quite a bit of time, but we can make that so much easier. And again, you can make it really easy if you know you want them all in one thread color. That would be certainly the easiest. Or if you want to join some of them to be in the same color, I'm not going to bother with that right now. And I'm just going to have them separate and I'll change it as I'm working on it. So I'm going to go to utility color sort. And it's thinking, thinking, and it reduced it by 32 color changes. Don't forget, you have to have the same tolerance zero, all of the, these same settings to get the same um, 
final result that I did. So I'm going to go to new view. It's very important to always check and make sure that in brilliance actually did what you thought it should do. And we're going to click on this plus sign. And let's see, there's our batting placement for all of our uh, filler blocks and our tack down of our batting and our placement of our main fabric. That's why you want to have these in order because it's going to stitch them as you do a tack down. Um, there's our tack down or basting stitch of each of the filler blocks. And then each of these uh, quilting designs are in order of how we placed them. There's that four by four and then the two two by two. So that was absolutely perfect. And now look at this, we have 13 stops, 13 um, steps instead of 45. That's pretty amazing. All right, so I'm going to go to save file, save stitch file as, and let's see here. I wanna save it. I'm in my red, white, and bloom because that's what I did my last tutorial on. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to Oh, so delightful. And I'm going to bring it to my embroidery files. Um, and I'm going to say, let's see, we're on the so happy quilt. So I'm going to say filler blocks two. So happy. And you could add what size hoop you are, you're using if you want, whatever works for you, name it, whatever you and place it, put it wherever you're going to remember. <clears throat> and then I'm going to, like I said, I don't have my larger machine. I've just got my dream machine with me. So I'm going to use a USB stick. I showed this once before. There's actually been questions about how to transfer this to a USB stick. Super simple. Um, my computer is under my desk over here. So excuse me for one second while I put this in. All right. So you get that little pop-up sound saying that um, you've put a uh, drive into your computer. Mine likes to say that there's something wrong with my file, um, but it always works itself out. Um, it's actually the problem is this cup of cheer quilt that I brought to my daughters. It won't let me delete it for some reason. I don't know why. So it is the, the file that this USB drive is corrupt in some way, but it always works itself out and lets me use it. So I'm going to go ahead and... Um, bring this in here so it's just it all it did is it popped up saying that I have USB drive F I have the wig on for my swaddle sweeties you don't want a lot of stuff on your USB drive I've heard that from other people that um, it can cause the USB drive to fail I haven't actually had that happen but if you have a ton of stuff that you're keeping on it it can supposedly go bad all right so I am going to go to my and brilliance and all I did was click outside into the workspace of Embrilliance and I'm going to file save stitch file as oh I already did that so actually what I'm going to do let me show you here you could have so actually let me show you if I go to file save stitch file as I have it saved here because I want to be able to use it again I think that that's very important but you could if you only wanted to save it on your drive you could just find that drive so see right there and I could save it there that's one way you could could click on that and name it and have it saved to that drive. I'm going to show you another way since I would want to keep this on my um, my hard drive, my computer, so that I can use it again in the future. So I'm going to click on this USB drive that I'm on and I'm going to say control N on my computer. It just creates a new folder, N for new, and I'm going to go to where I have the that file. So it's on my desktop. It's under OSD, and I put it in the embroidery files, Pez, and so happy, and see right there. So I've this is my filler blocks too. This is what the one that I saved on my hard drive. It's on my desktop. So I'm going to say Control C to copy that, and then I'm going to click on my USB drive F. See right here, this is that um, USB drive that I just inserted, and I'm going to say Control V like victory to copy or to paste it into that um, USB drive. So the reason I do that is because then I keep the one that's saved on my hard drive so that if I ever do another one of these quilts, I've already got these all done, but then I also have it on here on my um, F USB drive. And that makes it so that when I'm done with it on this drive, I always just delete it because I know I have it on my hard drive. I know that I have it saved. 
So that's what works for me. And you saw that was just like the easiest thing ever. And then you always want to go down here at the bottom of your computer. This is just computer stuff. You should already know this, I'm sure. But um, if you click on, oh, maybe it's not going to let me do it because I'm on. Let me see here. Oh, it's underneath this window, I'm sure. And I can't move this window. But you want to go on and here to show hidden icons and then find your hard drive and eject it that way. It will help your your USB drive to save, um, to work for longer if you're ejecting it in the correct way. And it's right here, you just down here at the bottom where it says show hidden icons, and then you can see the drive. You would just hover over it and click on that drive and it'll say, okay, I can eject that. And, and it'll tell you when it's safe to remove it. So anyway, it's not letting me do it because my, my face is in the way. <laughs> but anyway, that was just a real quick little um, tutorial on, on using a computer. I'm on a uh, PC. I don't use Mac computers, so it's probably different on that, but I'm not sure. So anyway, we are ready. We've got all of our files together on our USB drive and they're all joined together so that we can do it all in one hooping or a couple hoopings depending on your hoop size. So let's go ahead and get started with our playtime for today.
So my goal for Oh So Delightful is finding joy and um, noticing joy and things that fill you up and good vibes and all of that. And I had an amazing weekend, an absolutely amazing weekend. I did very little work, like very little, very little um, playtime with embroidery. I actually got outside. So Idaho, it's April and um, it's been cold and windy and a lot of snow and <laughs> It's been really hard um, for for this California girl. It's It's been a long winter and, and difficult for me, and I don't do well in cold. So um, it was really amazing this weekend. It was gorgeous outside. Today it's gorgeous and hot, but it's also super windy, like crazy windy, like 40 mile an hour gusts of wind. Um, so I took Archer out for a walk this morning and, um, we did great, enjoyed the, the sunshine, but, um, but this weekend we didn't have that wind. We had a little bit, but not so much. So I did a bunch of walks, hikes, um, even a bike ride, my first bike ride of the year, uh, my first outdoor bike ride. So that was amazing. I mean, it was so amazing that I actually cried when I got back. I was so thankful and feeling so blessed and happy. And so what I want to know from you you is what are you doing for your goal and even if this isn't your goal because obviously we've all got different goals I want to know what did you do this weekend to recharge yourself I think that's so important especially after a long winter like to get recharged and for me obviously I like to be active and so walking hiking uh, we even went to a movie and out to dinner I mean to, and church oh my gosh church service was amazing. We went to a new church and, um, it was such a great message and such a great sermon and the people were so nice and it was farther away, but oh my gosh, it was really cool. So literally like everything that happened this weekend was awesome and wonderful. And I got so recharged and, and I mean, we're coming back on winter again. <laughs> Idaho does these false springs. So we, um, we're actually going to drop like 20 degrees tomorrow. And so we'll have some more winter still, but I got recharged. So I just want to hear what did you do this weekend to recharge yourself, to help yourself to build a handle the cold or whatever difficulties that you have in life. And, and hopefully that you're doing stuff that recharges you. And I want to hear it. I want to know what you did. You know, it's another good one, by the way, when you help someone else, when you help someone else, that is like the best recharging, I think. Absolutely. When you're giving your time or your ability or sharing something with someone else or helping someone through something difficult, in my opinion, being of service, that is the best way to get recharged and feel really good. So anyway, I want to hear what you did. And my shirt today is my Easter shirt. I didn't get to wear it yesterday because I was wearing more dress up clothes. But this shirt, um, it's a beautiful cross design with, um, I don't remember what it's called, but the, I used purple fabric and it's sparkly purple fabric. And I added the words, it says it's not about the bunny and really, really, really cute design. I will try to remember where I got it. Hopefully I've got it documented somewhere. I want to say itch to stitch for some reason, but I could be making that up. But beautiful, beautiful design. I love this one. And it's on a hoodie from Amazon. Um, it's a, it's a really nice one. It, this one fits me differently than most of the ones I buy. It's a little bit bigger. I think it's, a. Uh, um, unisex shirt and so it fits a little bit too big on me um, even I've got either a small or an extra small and so it's a little bit bigger and so if your top half is bigger than mine this might be a really good um, option for you I'm bigger bot bottom half than top half so this one it, it hangs on me a little bit too big but um, anyway it's a great shirt for embroidery and there's um, plenty of room on it and it's a very comfortable shirt, super comfortable shirt. So I will add a link to the shirt and information on where I got the design underneath this video. Mm -hmm. 